this. No music. No music. I guess somebody would shout it. You can think about how good the Lord has been to you. You can think about where he brought you from. You can think about the fact that you're struggling right now, but you still make it. We thank you that you are a healer. We 
thank you that you are the God of salvation. We thank you for being redeemed, oh Lord God. We thank you. And we just give you all the glory. Oh, Lord God, there's nobody that can compare to you, Lord God. When you look around, there's nobody like you. And for that, Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for being a gracious God. Thank you for being a loving God, Lord God. When we were going left and you made us come back right. Thank you, Lord God, for loving the backslider. Thank you, Lord God, that being married to the backslider. Thank you, Jesus. you, Lord God, that he have a Raymond word up for your people, Lord God. And we just give you all the glory, Lord God, because Lord, we're in a day where people not preaching your word anymore. They just want to make things sound good for people who just want to be in the number just to feel good. But Lord God, your word say you desire holiness and righteousness, Lord God. Righteousness is still right with you. Holiness is still right with you, Lord God. Lord, I just give you the glory and I just thank you. And Lord God, that we lift you up on today, Lord God. Because Lord, you are worthy to be praised. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen.
have children's church today from ages 3 to 11. The parents remember um, sending them with an offer because we try to teach them how church operates. We're going to give the children's church ministry a round of applause.
Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to read verses 11 to 15.
I need him to be a heart regulator because I've got some issues of my heart that are going on. Lord, you know the things that I face. You know the stresses that I go through. Lord, I need you to be a bridge of a trouble water. Because when it looks like I can't swim, I want to just step in and make a highway. Yes. Heart. Yeah. That's how we got here. We're in the wilderness. Some of y'all in here will be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. Come on, preacher. Come on now. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Yeah. You see, that wilderness is just a desert. Come on, break it down, River. There's nothing. There's hardly any water. Hardly any vegetation, any plants, hardly any animals. It's just them and what God has sent with them to get them through. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all's wilderness looks like People that you don't like always around. <laughs> Come on. Talking in your ear about stuff that you don't need to hear. Y'all yeah, yeah, listen to what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Since it's Valentine's Day, I love y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take y'all like you. Your wilderness has a bunch of places that you don't need to be. Your, your wilderness has a bunch of things that you don't need to be touching, yeah. putting your hands on, or even putting in your pocket. But you're in that wilderness place. The children of Israel know that the Egyptians are coming after them. They said to Moses, listen man, why do you bring us out here to die? Anybody ever felt like that? When, and let's just be real. When God takes you to a place that you don't know why he took you there. And you just want to say, Lord, why did you bring me here? If I, if I can't get no amens out here, I know I can get them from here right here. Because anybody that's served in the capacity of ministry of some sort, when the Lord takes you to a place that you, sometimes you feel that you don't have any business. Sometimes you have to ask God, why did you bring me here? Can I help somebody today? We're going to get to the meat of this thing in a minute, but I promise. Sometimes you got to get a little James Cleveland in your spirit and just say, Lord, I feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Anybody can testify to that? I've come a long way from where I used to be. Some of y'all don't know me. I used to be crazy. I used to hang out and act the fool. But I've come a long way. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. They would have better 
it would have been better for us to be enslaved, beaten every day, misused and abused every day, than to die out here in the wilderness. Now, I'm sure everybody is wondering how does my topic match with this text? And I'm glad that you asked. Because when you go back in the text, God said in verse 4, I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now, when we look at the plot of this story, we see that the Egyptians come to what I like to call a cul-de-sac moment, where there's only one way in and one way out. Can I talk to some people in here that's been on a journey for so long, there's only one way in, and you only think that there's one way out? They're on their way through the desert, and they're on their way to the Red Sea. When you see the sea, and none of us can swim in this kind of water, nor can we get to a part to where we get across this thing. There's only one way in and one way out, and we can't go back out because the enemy is behind us. This is when you realize that God is able. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say that again. Because yeah. that, that, makes, that makes you want to shout. Yeah. God is able. God, I was with somebody yesterday and it was like, Pastor, we don't know. I met these people yesterday when I was visiting somebody else. Pastor, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Listen. Do you believe that God can do it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. See, let me tell you. Sometimes when you come across things that you can't see or you can't fathom, how you going to get out of it? If you believe that God can, that's all you need. I, I believe God can heal me. That's all I need. All you need is just to believe. I believe that God can put my family back together. I believe that God can save me. I believe that God can God's 
plan because we look too hard into it. Yeah. We think that it's more than what it should be. Yeah. All God I told them to do was go forward. Did y'all right. remember that from the text that we just read? He just said, go forward. Right. Whatever you do, go forward. I'm going to give you what you need to make it. Just keep going forward. That's my message to somebody in this room today. That no matter what comes your way, what the devil says to try to stop you, just keep going forward. Do I have any witnesses in here that can just say, the devil has tried to stop me. He has not me down to my knee. He has not me down to my arms. But I just trust in God. I stood back up and I refused to fall. I'm going to keep going. Why so, am not here, man? Here. Pastor Lomax passed away. There's a lot of people that thought this church was going to die. Thought that we was going to close the doors. Made on this. Yeah. When, well, let me go back. 
But Moses told them, listen. I know God said, go on forward. We see the red sea in front of us. But stand still, which means stop doing the most. Let me put this in plain terms. Stop doing the most and let God be God. That's a message for somebody right there. Stop crying about it. Let God work it out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Stop talking about it with people that don't have no business knowing what you got going on in the first place. Let God be God. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who will show you today. I just need somebody in here that's going to believe that God will show you something today. See, I like in the, all throughout the text you have things that I'm going to show you today or immediately or straightway. Which means that God is going to do his best work right then and there. But then he said, for the Egyptians that you have seen, after today, you're not going to see them no more. I need somebody that's going to believe God to some of the stuff that's going to stress you out. And God is saying, after today, you're not going to see it or be bothered with it no more. Y'all not talking to me right here. See, I came to talk to somebody with some faith in here today that says that after today, I'm not going to be bothered with all this stuff no more. I'm not going to be bothered with these lying people talking about me. I'm not going to be bothered with these folks that speak down on my ambitions, my dreams, and my goals. After today, I guess somebody to shout after today.
fight your battles. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Can I say that right? Yeah. Let's say this again. Unbow your fists. Yeah. It's a lot of y'all in here with your hands like this and we don't even know what you're about to swing at. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of y'all in here just like this today and you're about to swing at the wrong person for something that you believe is not even right. Yeah, I know I'm right because I'm not talking now. I'm not talking to you now. That's good. You, it's gonna come a time where you don't have to fight. But God says you got the opportunity right now to have a sweatless victory. Y'all don't know when to swing. Where my video game players at? You remember playing Mortal Kombat? Yeah. And when you would play Mortal Kombat. Where you would beat the person so bad to when they would say you win flawless victory. I'm here to tell somebody you have a God on your side right now that will help you defeat the enemy of the fail. And you can beat it and beat it as much as you want to, and when it's said and done, it's a flawless victory. Now we return to our regular schedule. All God said was go for it. Simple instructions, right? Yeah. Why do we make it so hard? Y'all heard the song by Lauren Hill X Factor. It could all be so simple. Yeah. What's the next line? Love me rather make it hard. Rather make it hard. Some of y'all in here act like y'all ain't never listened to the song before. Let me, let me, let me pause right quick and say this. This is not the place to try to play holy in here. Because everybody has been something once upon a time.
tell you. Not only is he going to tell you in the beginning, he's going to, I told this story all wrong in all parts. And that's fine because I'm going to make it all make sense. God will tell you in the beginning what he's going to do. Then, when you see something that makes you forget what God says, he'll tell you again. Y'all remember in the text, he said, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. I'm going to make them come after him. All you got to do is go forward. When you read right before he told Moses to stretch out his arm or the um, rod, he said, remember what I told you earlier? I'm a hard day hard. I done already done that. And they're coming after you. Now I want you to stretch out your rod. Because see, right now, you don't see your way forward. But I'm already on the other side of where you're trying to get to. Can I help somebody in here? God is already where you're trying to go. Oh, this is good. This is good. Let's talk about those trying to run from God. God is already where you're trying to go to. You're not going to get away from him. God is here. God is there. God is everywhere. Don't miss it. Let's say it again. God is here. God is there. God is everywhere. No, y'all ain't said it good enough. I said God is here. Working it out for me. He's over there. Oh, 
bunch of Bible studies together right now, and I'm going to make it all make sense at the end, I promise. And my father said, Drill, I saw this piece of property uh -huh. over here in Fountain Inn. I'm where in Fountain Inn. He said, Friendship House. I've never been over this area before. And this church had been sitting here for almost 10 years unoccupied. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Y'all read the story about the walls of Jericho falling yeah. down? You got to walk around this thing seven times. And on the seventh time, you got to hop. Yeah. Oh, the Bible says you got to blow your horn. But since we don't have horns, you got to holler. And the walls came tumbling down. Listen, the enemy will build walls around stuff that he feels that you shouldn't have. But if you walk around it and you start claiming it and you start speaking it and claiming it as if it's yours, I promise you, on the seventh time around when you holler, it's going to be some walls that fall down. Yeah. I think I'm ready to go to my seat now. I think I feel love. you have your hands in God's hands. Everything will work out just fine. I'm going to say it one more time. If you put your hands in God's hands, everything, I guess I'm about to shut everything will work out just fine. See the children of Israel running away from Egypt. They put their Just in one place. 
gonna put this out here too. I'm gonna get to your promise. We get ready to do a corporate fast. Yes, God. I'm gonna say this. I want you to hear me say this publicly. Yeah. If you don't believe that God can do it, then I don't want you to participate. I know people are saying, "Why would you say that, Reverend?" Because I'm believing God for something great, yeah, not for me. Everybody in this room, I don't want this fast to be like every other one that we've done. So I'm, I'm here to tell somebody, if this is not your thing, if you're not believing God for something great, then to the left, to the left, to the left. But for those who are believing God for something, I'm talking about breakthrough, healing, miraculous move, something that you can't, something that you can't explain. Then this fast is for you. We'll get to the details when we get to that time. But I, I, would, I, I would love for everybody under the sound of my voice to participate. Yes, because when I say I'm believing God for something, yes. like if you come to me and say, Your mother is sick, I'm believing God to do it. And not only do it, but super exceed our expectations. Not only for you to celebrate, so that we all can celebrate with you. Fast, whatever it is that you're praying for, we will be believing God to do. Amen. That's right. Go ahead. 